here we have a quick look at the Thorn WJ11 off-air receiver. First, a few words about uh, why we need an off-air receiver in MCR21 or indeed any outside broadcast truck. If the truck is doing um, a live broadcast rather than a recorded program, Obviously the, the output of the vehicle is going to have to be fed into um, studio centre and then be part of some wider programming. So it's very useful for the people sitting in the production truck to be able to see what precedes their contribution to the programme. And indeed if it's a sort of programme that's going to require repeated inserts into it, it's essential then that, for example, a commentator can see the context of what they are actually going to be working within. In a live program situation of course it also provides the ultimate confidence check that your production really is going to air. And that's still true today although things are a little bit more tricky because of the delays involved in modern TV production. Uh, there's the satellite delay for example and also more significantly the emission encoder delay which can be around about five or six seconds. So the value of a live off-air receiver is perhaps diminished. Now if we take ourselves back to 1963 when MCR21 came into service there were just two UK TV channels namely BBC and ITV. But the 60s was a time of great technical change uh, in UK broadcasting. At that time those two channels were transmitted in VHF bands 1 and 3 but BBC Two launched in 1964 on 625 lines UHF. So immediately the fleet of outside broadcast vehicles had to cope with two standards, 405 line TV and 625 line TV. So consequently the off-air receiver is necessarily rather more complicated. It has to cope with both bands. So they're effectively two off-air receivers in the same box. So the VHF channels are set by fixed internal coils and there, but there is a fine tuning arrangement here but for UHF we have full control over the entire channel set from 21 to 68. So I'll have a quick look inside the receiver now. There are quick release screws that hold the side panel on, which initially makes you think it's going to be quite nice inside and quite easy to service. So it's nice and easy to take the side panels off. Let's we'll see what horrors lie within. So most of the receiver is accessible from the left hand side panel and Immediately we see an interesting hybrid um, set of electronics here. We've got transistor board down here with the transistors mounted upside down with their legs passing through the circuit board. Whereas up here we've got um, a valve based circuit board. So we've got some interesting technology going on here. It's a hybrid transistor and valve receiver. Um, and I guess that's kind of representative of the transition that was going on in electronics in the 1960s. We've got proven valve-based receiver technology, but we're looking towards the future and the output stages, uh, the video output stage and part of the automatic frequency controls is dealt with on this transistor board. The construction itself is surprisingly backward looking in terms of ability to be serviced because bearing in mind that this is supposedly a broadcast piece of equipment it should be easy to access and dismantle but it's actually really rather fiddly I'm not even going to try and take it apart the instructions are quite um, <laughs> elaborate in explaining how you can remove the boards to get at the components but it's far from easy um, the other thing I, I noticed straight away is that we do have some silk screening of component information 
on the top of this board and it's actually quite handy it tells you a lot about what's going on but down on the transistor board there's absolutely nothing no clue at all and you have to refer to the service manual and look at the um, uh, the, the, the overlays to actually work out what component is what. And that's even before you try to get this board out to remove a potentially faulty component. So compared to the Pi monitors uh, that we've looked at, which were from maybe a couple of years after this was designed, you, you, this is pretty horrendous. Um, but there we are. Things that shows you how things have regressed. And round the back there's not a lot to uh, point out other than the fact that because we've got two aerial inputs, one for band 1 and 3 and the other one for band 5. And we've got our video output there, balanced audio output and 240 volt uh, mains going in here. Right, so uh, a very simple test set up here. We've got an RF signal generator um, putting out uh, on band 5, connected to the UHF input on the receiver and a monitor just connected to the video output. If I turn the mains on, um, go and make a cup of tea because this is valve based technology and it's going to take uh, around about 25 seconds to warm up according to a manual. Uh, so we just have to twiddle our thumbs until a picture appears as if by magic. A little noisy at first but I think that's going to settle down as the tuning comes in. There is automatic frequency control which is uh, going to keep that on signal hopefully. I will leave it a few moments and then we'll just demonstrate that it's, uh, it's really working. So if I tune off, oh, I should point out also that there's uh, an inbuilt loudspeaker just to give you uh, uh, some confidence, although in practice I imagine that that would be left switched off and the uh, audio uh, monitored elsewhere. So I'll, I'll leave it turned on just so we can hear it go off tune. And the picture goes first. Signal strength meter is reading a little bit strangely in my opinion, but um, I'm going to resist the temptation to, to do anything to this receiver at all, as it's not my area of expertise. And as we come in and out of tune, that meter is telling us something. <laughs> there is a specification for the sensitivity of this receiver and we can sort of stress it if you like by switching in attenuation to weaken the signal and see if we can still resolve it or the answer is uh, it, it can tolerate a certain amount but it, it gives up relatively quickly. However, um, this brings us on to pointing out another little interesting thing that we're going to have to overcome. Of course, uh, we don't have analogue television in this country and haven't had since uh, the last transmitter was switched off after the 2012 Olympics. So for the demonstration purposes, we're going to have to regenerate our own analogue TV signal. And that will be done with a little bit of uh, hidden away fakery, i.e an off-air freeview receiver uh, with receiving digital television and uh, an, uh, a modulator which will uh, give us analogue TV at low power just straight into the back of the, the receiver. Okay, well that's a quick round-up of the Thorn WJ11 off-air receiver. Hopefully you found that uh, interesting. I can send this back to Brian next week and we can put it back in MCR21 and it'll not be another piece of equipment that's uh, checked and uh, operational. So uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll catch you in the next video.